Jonathan Barrett is the founder and CEO of Next Sense. He is sitting down with us one on one here at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Jonathan, thanks for being here. Good to have yeah, you. Good to be here. Thanks you just wrapped up a panel. The panel was This is Your Brain on Entrepreneurship. Jonathan, what is it all about? And it was more like This is Your Group Therapy for Entrepreneurs. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it, it was crazy. It was really good. But I think, you know, it was really a, a time for everybody to share their story. And interestingly enough, I, I think what was unique about our stories was that we all had some personal journey to overcome, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there was there was a lot of candid discussion, a lot of disclosure. Um, and you know what? That's what you need. You know, I mean, uh, Andy's great. He wrote a book, you know, uh, I think it's called uh, Burnout. And, you know, he shared in front of this audience about his, his journey with bipolar, right? Mm -hmm. And... I kind of for the first time came out as a narcissist. Like I, I you know, I, I have problems when it comes to, you know, managing my own emotions. Now that can be a superpower, right? And you know, I, I shared with the panel, it's like, you know, if you've had a good experience with your iPhone and Bluetooth, like I hired the guy from Apple. Like, you know, he was there 10 years making Bluetooth. He came to work for me. Like I have an ability to draw people, but I also have somehow something that can repel people. And, wow. you know, so I think it was really, you know, uh, this is my first time at South by Southwest, but I'm really struck by the, the type of people they're bringing. And, you know, and the moderator said, I, I want you to be real. I want you to be really candid. So mm. I hope you uh, hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm in that vibe right now. No, I appreciate it. So let's stay with that vibe a little <laughs> yeah. bit longer. What are yeah. some of those things that maybe you were to look back at your younger self and your business yeah. career, yeah. especially in terms of the personal values, yeah. the personal growth, your yeah. personal journey yeah. that you wish you knew a little bit sooner? Yeah, I think I think number one would be to surround yourself with people that can help manage you, right? Like it's 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 important to have your own kind of personal board of directors. And I think sometimes I've had that. I've had men's groups that have, you know, have really helped me. But I think I could have used that even earlier. Like right now, I mean part of part of the disclosure today came from a men's group that I had this weekend, you know, where we, where we really just kind of got in there and, and I had to kind of come to terms with this and, and they're helping me through it. And that's what, you know, when you have that, it breaks the power and the shame of it. And I know it was true for, you know, my fellow panelists, but I wish somebody had told me that in my twenties, right? Because you're just going it alone. You think you can't share. You think you have to be strong. You think you have to just have all the answers, but you know, people, people can tell when you don't. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the hardware initiatives. Tell me all about these earbuds that yeah. Sense is working on. What should people yeah. know if they're unfamiliar? Oh, man. So the Tone Buds, they came out of the Google Moonshot factory. So, you know, we incubated these things um, where Waymo and the driverless cars, you know, my mission was to come up, what's next? What's beyond the phone? Uh, you know, it's a small little mission, right? Of and so I did a lot of research. I went to all these conferences. I talked to really smart people. And I came to you know realize I think the body is the next platform mm -hmm. that we need to surface these bio signals in particular brain signals so that we can build really amazing apps on top of it. So these earbuds they work like just regular earbuds, but they're also sensing your brain waves and they're surfacing that, and that means it's a platform. Now we've decided to build a specific app for sleep. We just feel like a billion people on the planet can't sleep well, and we help them sleep. Like if you can only sleep five or six hours, we can actually make that sleep deeper so that it's restorative like seven or eight. And so we feel like that's sort of our, our wedge, but it's super exciting to think about what else could you build, right? Like, you know, I personally use the buds to get off of ADHD meds, you know? And it's like, that's super cool. Now, I, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with ADHD meds. Some people really have a, you know, an acute condition, they have to manage it. But for me, I'd rather harness the natural power of the brain you know, to really unleash people's potential. I mean, that's what gets me fired up. It's like, if I can help you, if I can help her realize who they're meant to be, like, I get so excited. What is the data security component about that? Like, uh, I feel like that's yeah. an obligatory question. People want to know they to make sure know. these data you're I, getting is being handled is, the right that way. That is part of why I spun it out, to be honest. Because, yeah. you know, I just thought people won't trust a big tech company, right? right. And so when, when we spun out, we made it part of our data privacy policy that your brain data is going to stay on your phone. And it's going to mean we're going to go slower in algorithm development, you know? Okay. And so we told our investors, like, we're not going to do anything at all costs to get the best algorithms because that's what's gotten to us in this problem. That's where doom scrolling, you know, we, we, people are sharing so much information in the cloud to the big tech companies. Their AI loves it. But this is brain data. You know, we should go slow. So, so we're taking a very methodical approach. In fact, two days ago, um, our head of uh, product was on a neuroethics panel here at South by Southwest. Wow. Um, one of the leaders in the space is Nita Farahani, and you know she's helping you know uh, write legislators. She you know advises us, 
um, because it's super important. Like this is privacy with a capital P. We have to do everything we can to protect it. And so the best way to do that is just to leave it on the phone. Jonathan, what is one thing about brain health that more people should be aware of? People should be aware that we all sleep differently. We've evolved to sleep, and there's lots of stuff out there. Everybody knows sleep's important, right? So, you know, they read the internet, they do these, you know, sleep routines, but actually a lot of that stuff is garbage because you can get very ritualized. You evolve to sleep, find your natural sleep rhythm. Maybe it's five hours during the night and then an hour spread out over a couple different cycles. Wow. You know, we evolved to be polyphasic sleepers. So, do you like dogs? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Do you see how he like sleeps and he pops up immediately, goes oh, yeah. back down? Yeah. 85% of all mammals, including us, are polyphasic sleepers. And nobody knows that. And so they just think they have to go to sleep at a certain time. You don't. Know, just be yourself. Sleep when you're tired. This is when it's natural. No one size fits all. No one size fits all. And that's where the tone buds can help. We can help find that rhythm, you know? What is something everyone can do or should consider to do to improve either sleep or overall brain health, you think? Yeah. Something we should be conscious of in our day to day. Yeah. I think that, you know, people have heard a lot about meditation, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's great. But I also talk to a lot of people who they say, oh, I just have racing thoughts. I, I can't meditate. What I tell people, just lie down. Can you find a quiet place? Can you, can you put, you know, like a, an eye patch over your eyes and for 10 minutes, just listen to some music and have it shut off after 10 minutes. Now I tell them, set an alarm for 20 because you might actually fall asleep, but the point isn't falling asleep. It's just giving your brain that 10 minute break of doing nothing. Don't meditate, don't try to fall asleep, don't, you know, don't listen to a podcast. Like our brain is just overstimulated. And so there's a brain rhythm called the alpha rhythm. When you just close your eyes and they're still, 80% of people generate it in 30 seconds. So you don't even really need 10 minutes, but it's like a spa for the brain. This alpha rhythm just bathes your neurons in just a nice slow rhythm, because why? That part of your brain is processing visual information. So when you cut it out, close your eyes for me right now. Right there. Mm. Alpha rhythm is generated, wow. it's slowing you down. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't know. They should try it. That's awesome. Finally, I want to get your perspective. Oh, my, even as I'm talking after that, I'm like, I just talked in a more easier way. I love that. Oh, let's go. Oh, we're going to do more of these interviews so I can like learn to zen out a little bit. Finally, I'd love to get your take on some of the kind of higher profile components of tech health. People hear a lot about Neuralink and Elon Musk. Your, your thoughts on some of those big tech headlines that a lot of people are probably more familiar with and how you feel like your work feeds into that. Yeah, I mean, Neuralink is, is, is great. It's groundbreaking. It's invasive. Um, you know, Joe Rogan did a, a really nice interview with, with someone that, uh, you know, had the, the Neuralink implant. I think that it's, um, it's mostly for those people, though, that have a severe locked-in syndrome or you know, severe epilepsy, things like that. Yeah. So on, on one hand, that research is, is really important, but how do you get it more accessible, right? And I think if you think about you know, the evolution of you know, computing paradigms, it's usually an interface change, right? You, know, you went from you know, a command line interface to the graphical interface with a mouse, you know, to the voice, and then to the multi-touch. You know, what, what really is next? It really is using the full body as the operating system. And so as cool as some of that invasive stuff is, look out for technology that is just gonna be as simple as putting in your ears to monitor and manage the brain. I learned a ton during this interview. Really grateful for right. your time, Jonathan. Thanks yeah. a lot for being here. Best of luck to you and your colleagues at Next Sense after South By. Thanks for doing this.